Having hardly any qualified men to replace their fallen legionaries, Rome must now adapt, otherwise they could soon see their empire collapse and their city ransacked like all those years before when the Celts sacked Rome. Electing a novice homo or new man, Gaius Marius, to the job because of his qualifications, change was about to revolutionise the Roman army and, indeed, the Roman world forever. So the major problem facing the Roman army is you need to be a landowner or a property owner to enlist in the Roman army. So the idea behind this was that you would be fighting for your home and as such you would fight harder and you were less likely to rebel against the state. The Roman Senate is very much aware they have a very powerful army. This limits the number of people you can recruit from, as it essentially limits the Roman army recruiters to the middle class. Now this is all well and good until you run out of middle class men to recruit. So Marius makes an argument in the Senate saying that you don't have to be a property holder to be a Roman citizen in the Roman Republic, so why should you have to own property to serve in the Roman army? The reason why Marius makes this statement is because there are far more poorer Roman citizens than there are middle class Roman citizens. Therefore, there is a larger potential recruiting pool in the poorer districts of the Roman Republic than in the richer districts. This logic cannot really be argued and so the Roman Senate allows Marius to send out his recruiters to recruit from the poorer citizens of Rome. Needless to say, the poorer citizens flock to the recruiting stations. Many want to serve in the Roman army, it's an extremely good job. It's a very dangerous job, but there are hundreds of opportunities that you wouldn't get if you stayed in Italy. There is an opportunity to see the world at the state expense, you can have wine, women and song, and on top of that you have the potential to get rich in the form of booty or captured treasure. As a result, many want to serve in the Roman army and previously couldn't because of the property restrictions. Now that those restrictions have been lifted, all these poor Roman men can now enlist in the army and potentially escape poverty. With the enlistment of the poorer Roman citizens, Marius has essentially solved the Roman army manpower problem. However, in doing so, he's also created another problem for himself. You see, the state does not provide the soldiers with the equipment they need, except for their shield and their sword. So, as a result, these soldiers would have to buy their own equipment. This is what has resulted in units such as the Velites and Hastati being so lightly armed. Now, Marius solves this because he knows what equipment will work best. Remember, he's a veteran from the Numidian War, and in the Numidian War, his legionaries had adapted and only selected equipment that works. Knowing that his men cannot afford to buy this equipment that works for themselves, Marius instead orders it on bulk on behalf of the state to equip their soldiers. This is brilliant because it standardises the Roman equipment. The Roman army's training is already standardised, hence why it's such a powerful force in the Mediterranean, and now their equipment has been standardised, meaning that the quality of the legionaries has been increased. On top of this, Marius may have even paid for some of the equipment out of his own pocket, further increasing his popularity with his legionaries. Now for speed. In order for the Roman army to quickly react to threats on their borders, they have to get from point A to point B extremely quickly. The Roman Republic now stretches from Rome to Greece to Africa to Spain. That's a lot of territory to cover. And simply put, the tried and proven method of transporting troops with wagons and horses is simply too slow now. If there is a threat in Hispania and a Roman legion is in Italy, the Roman legion needs to get to Hispania quickly and effectively. So what Marius does is he looks at the Roman legionary's standard backpack, or what he would carry with him on campaign and he begins to take away the unnecessary and irrelevant objects in the backpack. 
This eventually condenses down into a tiny sack that could be held on a stick. Maris also comes up with a way in which the legionaries can carry spare equipment, such as pots, pans, spoons, and also pickaxes, as after all, the legionaries need to dig trenches in order to defend themselves in camp. So basically, what Marius does is he puts all this equipment onto that big stick. So not only now is the legionary carrying a spare cloak in his little rucksack, but he's also carrying all the equipment that he needs on campaign on his rucksack. Meaning that there is now no need for horse-drawn wagons carrying equipment. Horses, after all, cannot go where a single human can go. For example, a human can cover rough terrain such as mountains, whilst a horse not so well. Some horses can, but most horses cannot. And a horse carrying a wagon definitely cannot cover rough rocky terrain all that well. So Maris's legionaries are now extremely mobile. They are carrying everything that they need and not having to worry about the horse-drawn wagons which are pulling everything they need. They can simply pick up their rucksack and go to where they want to go. This, needless to say, becomes a little bit of a joke among Maris's legionaries, who begin to nickname themselves Maris's mules because they are carrying so much equipment. But at the same time, the equipment carrying is making them stronger and more resilient and also building up their stamina. As a result, the Roman legionary has once again improved in quality. They can now get from point A to point B quicker than any army before them, And whilst they're doing that, they are also training their stamina, strength, and physical endurance. Marius has essentially achieved what he is elected consul for. He has solved the Roman manpower shortage, he's also solved all the problems that came as a result of him solving the Roman manpower shortage, and he's also upgraded the Roman army to a point where it is potentially one of the deadliest forces in the entire world. Now all he needs is to wait for the Cimbri and Tetones, who had caused the situation in which Marius was elected, to arrive back in the Roman sphere of influence and for him to soundly defeat them, thus ending the threat of the Cimbri and Tetones once and for all. Thanks for watching and listening to our video. If you like the channel, consider subscribing to Ancient History Guy. Or, if you really like the channel, head on over to our Patreon feed. There, for as little as $1 a month, you can gain access to exclusive documentaries, behind the scene footage, and videos before they're live on YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.